One of the state's noted convicted murderers is working to appeal his case. In 2007, Avery was convicted of killing 25-year-old freelance photographer Teresa Halbuck. Well, Avery's public defenders filed 60 pages worth of paperwork listing reasons and examples of evidence they say that should have been allowed at Stephen Avery's trial. At this time, the court will read the verdicts. On count one, the verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Stephen A. Avery, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in the first count of the information. What occurred sometime between 3, 4, 5 p.m. The biggest villain in making a murderer has to be the special prosecutor Ken Kratz, by hosting a press conference pre-trial announcing that Brendan Dassey had confessed to the murder of Teresa Holbach, Kratz turned local public opinion against two innocent defendants and poisoned the pool of potential jurors throughout the state of Wisconsin. This stroke of evil genius by Kratz was based on carefully selected snippets of testimony from Brendan Dassey an intellectually challenged 16-year-old whom two detectives, Fassbender and Weigart, two other villains in this video series, had grilled for hours on end, coerced with leading questions, and basically told Brendan Dassey exactly what they wanted him to say. Kratz presented a barrage of fake evidence with the flourishes of a circus ringmaster. He later claimed that making a murderer left out his best evidence the sweat DNA found under Teresa Halbach's RAV4 hood. It was conclusively Stephen Avery's sweat DNA, Kratz claimed over and over, perhaps to differentiate it from the blood DNA allegedly planted by the sheriff's deputies. However, there was never any test done to show it was sweat DNA. Kratz, as usual, had made that up out of the clear blue sky that Stephen Avery had lifted the hood. More words fed to Brendan Dassey to fit the story concocted by Kratz and the detectives. Good evening. Words of regret and embarrassment from an area elected official. In 2009, Kratz was busted in a sexting scandal. His victims were multiple vulnerable women. One, a domestic violence victim whose ex-boyfriend had tried to strangle her. Kratz was prosecuting the boyfriend. His messages to his victim included, Are you the kind of girl that likes secret contact with an older married elected district attorney? The riskier, the better. After she rejected him, Kratz replied, What's your sticking point? Your low self-esteem and your fear you can't play in my big sandbox? Despite constant rejections, Kratz continued to pursue the vulnerable woman with messages like, I'm the attorney. I have the $350,000 house. I have the six-figure career. You may be the tall, young, hot nymph, but I am the prize. I'm embarrassed and ashamed for the choices that I made and the fault was Perhaps mine. The attribute that gives Kratz supervillain status is his unusual voice. Sickly soft and coaxing, it seems to be the kind of voice that a child molester would aspire to in order to lure kids from park playgrounds. I'm not saying he's a paedophile, but the sexting scandal confirmed his deviant tendencies towards young, vulnerable women and the lack of this man's character. So for framing two innocent people for murder, getting them life sentences, thereby ruining teenager Brendan Dassey's life, all based on hearsay, coerced testimony, planted DNA, and other planted physical evidence. Not to mention being an unabashed sexual deviant, Kratz's face actually lit up in recent interviews when he talked about his sexting. We award Ken Kratz 
the number one spot in our Making a Murderer Villain video series.